folks? Well, I had a lot of people been asking. Uh, they want to see more footage of my homestead. Uh, when they seen the uh, screen house over here in the uh, birdhouse videos, uh, I had quite a few people write and say they want to see more of the screen house. And uh, a while back, a lot of people were asking to see uh, a video on the chicken coop. Well, I'll go ahead and show a little bit of footage here, give you all a sneak peek here to satisfy your curiosity. Uh, I'm not going to show the inside of the homestead until I get it finished. I still got a lot of work to do in there. Uh, I don't work in there very often, though. But I'm going to try and get it finished this summer. Uh, so that means I'm going to probably do less at the cabin, but hey, I'm one-man operation, so I can do what I can. But uh, I've been chilling out in the screenhouse this evening, got a fire going. So I'll show you that, show you a little bit here, and uh, I'm uh, heading to the cabin probably tomorrow or the day after. I'm going to stay there for several days. We're going to do some work over there. So I'll have a cabin video for you guys pretty soon. Now, when I built this, the town says that anything uh, 144 square feet or over is considered a structure and will be taxed, but anything under that which uh, 144 feet, uh, that's uh, 12 by 12. Anything under that is not considered a structure, and it won't be taxed. So I built this, it's around 11 foot 8 by 11 foot 8. <laughs> and uh, it's a pretty nice little structure. Uh, it's all cedar shingles there. All the pine is what I milled here from the property. I got a pile of logs over there I'm going to be milling here one of these days fairly soon I hope and uh, show you the other side of this I put a steep pitch on it because over here on this back side I have a door up there and that's like a kiln it's really hot up there and that's where I store lumber that I'm going to use for cabinets and stuff like that because it's really super dry and then when I build something I'm not worrying about it all shrinking up you know and I put the door on that end just mainly because I wanted to have a moose rack hanging on this end. So I couldn't have both on one side without making it look hodgepodge, so I did it that way. And uh, I got my moose rack up there. I didn't shoot the moose, though. <laughs> so this is it. You probably don't see too many screen houses with a fireplace in it, huh? <laughs> I really, really enjoy a fire, but uh, it's annoying when you're sitting there and you're getting swarmed by mosquitoes at night, and I really don't like wearing bug spray. So uh, I put my thinking cap on, you know, and I set this up. A little chimney in here, and the pipe goes up, goes through a metal bester's chimney right through the roof. And I just have a nice little fire. Yeah, and what I burn in here too is just little bits and pieces left over like when I'm cutting my kindling when I'm cutting my firewood I got little little scraps left over and uh, I keep them in this old crock here and uh, it's nice and handy and this uh, chimney here has a, a little grate that fits inside and you can do some grilling and it's pretty cool like I said I'd be in here at nighttime or whatever cooking a marshmallow or cooking a steak or something and uh, no bugs bugging me and it's awesome I'm not sorry I built this, I'll tell you. It really didn't cost me anything, uh, not much of anything I bought. I bought uh, the shingles and the drip edge and the screen door. I just bought a cheapy screen door for it. And the screen material was all left over from a screen house I built for somebody about a decade ago. So, aside from the nails and the shingles and the aluminum drip edge, I didn't pay anything for this whole whole screen house. Oh, except for the chimney. The chimney, too. I bought the metal bestest. But it's pretty slick. Nice little project. And it was fun to build, too, you know. It was fun. I was in here last night till about 10, 10.30. Uh, lots of tree frogs making noise. Uh, there was fireflies on the screens here flashing away. It was real pleasant. Real, real pleasant. Way down there, there's a duck house. And this morning there was a doe and a fawn right over there messing around. I have deer out here most mornings and evenings. Uh, this time of year, the does are always out there with their fawns in the morning. 
It's always enjoyable to watch them. This one only had one fawn with her. Uh, and sometimes they have triplets. Um, very enjoyable to watch. I was really surprised to see how far she let him venture off away from her. He was an adventurous little guy, that's for sure. You could hear him walking in the water down here. Uh, really enjoyable to watch. Um, I cater to the deer on my property here, as most of the red meat that I consume is venison. Uh, but after I take what I need, I offer them a nice refuge here. They have a lot of good forage, they have a lot of good cover. And when there's hunting pressure on the surrounding farms, they can come here to seek refuge and I don't bother them at all. I only take a few deer from the property because that's all I need and I, I offer them refuge the rest of the year. Pretty cool place to hang out. And my futon, my nap area there. Looking back at the homestead. And I put all logs in the ceiling here just because that's my style. I like to look at round logs and that's how I have it at the cabin. So I have it here. I still got to make some trim to trim out the windows and the door, but who knows when that's going to happen. But all of this tongue and groove, this is stuff I milled. Milled it out of my logs just like that. And then I planed it. And I picked out the wormy stuff because that's what I like. So it makes nice uh, fine walls in here. And when I'm hanging out here and not a bug is in the air, man, I'm loving it. Frankie likes it too. <laughs> huh, bugger? Yeah, dude. A little blue spruce that I transplanted a number of years ago. It's a real slow growing tree though as you can see it's only got about a little less than three inches of growth there so far this year. It's a pretty tree though. An old crisscross fence over here to define the yard. Uh, these are all my woods here. I'll show you an aerial view of that in a minute. Get some hostas growing here. Frankie's tennis balls are all over the place. I gotta put my 3D targets away. I got a bunch of those kicking around. And a few more spruces over there that I transplanted. And my fur shed over there. And the chicken coop over there. And I have everything lined up nicely just the way I wanted it. Now over here, uh, I still got some work to do on the house here. It's needing another coat of stain. Ah. Uh, a lot of work when you have everything that's wood, but I'm not very fond of vinyl siding. Now, the, the cabin's built on piers here, and uh, this end was, you know, five feet off the ground. So I built this stone retaining wall, all rocks that I collected, and then filled it with dirt. And I used to have this planted with all kinds of flowers and stuff like that, but it got too much to take care of. So I popped them all out of there. And I've scattered them. I've got some over there by the crisscross fence, and I planted some at the cabin. I'm just kind of leaving them here and there, and there's a group over there, and they're scattered around. And this, I'm just, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. I just might let it turn into lawn. But I like working with stone. This comes out like this, then it goes in a radius, and then returns and does the same as this on the other end. And it was real pretty when it was all flowers and stuff, but it was just too much to maintain. You know, I like I like stuff like that, but I don't want to be married to the projects all the time. So that's why I'm doing this big cleansing process in my life right now. I'm selling off stuff. I'm getting rid of... And I, I want to get my possessions down to where the only possessions I have is stuff I use. I'm getting rid of everything else. I've been selling off stuff like crazy. The over in behind the yard over here is all hemlock forest. It's real dark in there, as you can see, even in the middle of the day. It's just like that, it's the black forest, <laughs> which I like. And behind the chicken coop there and down behind the fur shed, there's a lot, a lot of, lot of woods, a lot of land. I'll show you my aerial view here. Now where we're sitting right now, the house is right here. That's my marsh there. That beaver lodge is right out there behind the uh, screenhouse, but it's all 
caved in now. And this yellow line here, the square, is what I originally bought. And then I bought a bunch of property over here, which I'll show you in a minute. But now the property from here to here is about a half a mile. From this part of my land to this boundary is about a half a mile. And to this boundary to this boundary is about a half a mile. But it jogs a lot. It's a really nice hay field, another nice hay field. And this hay field's in here. I have, I have this other marsh. These, all these lines are different parcels I bought. This one was 28. This one here was uh, 69 point something, just about 70 acres. And then this one was 26, uh, something like that. And I forget which one that, what that was there. But yeah, it's, it's pretty nice. It's diversified. I got a sand pit over here. I have mixed forest. Uh, lots of nice little funnel zones to hunt on. I got tree stands all over the place. Really nice, really nice place. And there's, uh, you know, I collect all my firewood here. And basically when I'm cutting firewood, all I do is just cut standing dead and diseased and broken trees. There's never a reason for me to cut a, a good fresh tree at all. There's plenty of standing dead out here. I used to own another 115 acres over here which uh, everything within this black line was mine. And then I've been selling it all off. And I have everything over here sold off now. I had chunked it off. This used to be mine too. I sold that. I sold this piece here. And I sold everything on this side of this power line. And then I sold over this. And this was a 10, 10 acre parcel. I sold that square there. And then I sold this. And I made a bunch of money on that. <laughs> that was good. Investing in land is the way to go. I made some pretty good cake on that right here. So anyway, this is the homestead. Everything in this black line is the homestead now. And I think when I when I put it up for sale, if that's the route I take, I'm going to offer the homestead here with uh, probably about 20 acres and also offer with 124. But hard to say exactly what I'm going to do. I, uh, I don't owe a cent on it, and I just pay taxes, so it's not that hard to keep it, but I'm not sure. If I'm going to end up living at the cabin, uh, might end up back in New Hampshire, I really don't know. i got a lot of options, and that's a good place to be. I'm not nailed down to anything, and I like that. So I'm just kind of taking the summer to uh, feel it all out, and maybe by fall I might not, <laughs> still might be undecided. Oh, it's hard to say if I'll be staying here or moving on, but wherever I live, I will always have plenty of woods around me. I can tell you that.